As Young Thug once said, F cancer, shout out to Boosie. But in real talk, guys, I need you to do me a favor. Foster Morrow, he is in full remission. So let's celebrate by hitting the thumbs up icon. The more likes, the more love to Foster Morrow. So hit that thumbs up icon. You got six seconds to do it. Ready, set, go. All right, we're getting straight into the news because this is just an awesome update. Came in right before the 4th of July. After a few months, I have been blessed with the news that I am in full remission from Hodgkin lymphoma. I'm so grateful to everyone who has reached out to offer their love and support. Our prayers were answered. From here, I will continue to live my life as God intended, AMDG. And guys, this is coming from Foster Morrow himself. Wonderful news. I'm honestly really glad that Foster Morrow got to break the news as well. I think that's how it should have been. I think that it was a phenomenal thing for him to be able to talk about, especially right before the 4th of July holiday. I mean, who doesn't want to get some good news before the 4th of July? It's incredible news, guys. It is phenomenal to hear that. I am so excited for Foster Morrow. And also, you want to know what they probably saw when they get, got his last scan? When, when the doctors were like, let's go see what, you know, let's just make sure we're all good here. This is what they probably saw. He said he's got that dog in him because he is in full remission. We are celebrating. It is awesome news. I, I can't be happier. As somebody in my, as, uh, in my life that has been affected by cancer, family members, friends, all sorts of people in my life, and I'm sure you sitting at home have had these similar experiences with cancer, I just have to say, dear Foster, thank you for fighting, and thank you for inspiring all of us. Cancer is scary, man. It doesn't matter what the diagnosis is. It doesn't matter how severe or how light it can be. It's scary. But cancer sucks. It is not a good thing to ever deal with. I wouldn't wish that upon anybody, not even a Falcons fan. And at the end of the day, guys, I really wanted to just show some love and just say thank you, Foster Morrow, for inspiring us, for continuing to fight, and for being able to come back and play for the New Orleans Saints. But let's talk some football and why this is important. Because when you take a look at the depth chart, Juwan Johnson, he's going to be your tight end one. But I'm a firm believer that Foster Morrow is going to be getting in the mix quite a bit. Taysom Hill, y'all know the drill. He's not really a tight end. He's just a football player. If fantasy football had a flex, or if there was like the real fantasy football flex position, Taysom Hill would be that guy. So in terms of the production for Juwan Johnson, Foster Morrow, if you got to watch any Derek Carr tape, which as a Saints fan, I'm sure you have. If you've looked back on any tape from Derek Carr, you can see that he loves having his tight ends. When he was in Oakland and in Las Vegas, he loved getting the ball to Darren Waller and Foster Morrow. But this is how they, they shook out last year. Juwan Johnson, 42 receptions on 65 targets, 508 yards, 7 tutties, 12.1 yards per catch, and he had 25 first downs. I've said this before, I'll say it again. Juwan Johnson is Mr. Reliable, or he was Mr. Reliable last year. That's what we're calling him this year. Foster Morrow might kind of give him a run for his money, though. 24 first downs, two touchdowns. I mean, uh, like, so many reps that were quality for both uh, players. And you also got to extend drives with these guys. He also had 12.7 yards per catch, 420 yards. Very nice. It's pretty crazy to see that these two guys are going to be lining up next to each other and be the guys that Derek Carr can just have a safety blanket and dump the ball off to. Plus, there's already the chemistry with Foster Morrow, so even better. And I'm going to go ahead and give a bold prediction here. I think that Juwan Johnson and Foster Morrow will both have career years this season. Juwan Johnson, let's keep it real. Let's be honest. He's a great football player, but he's been under the radar up until this point, or up until last season. But he kind of broke out a little bit last year. I, and I think this year, he makes himself, a, or makes a case for himself to be a true quality, you know, high-end talent at tight end. Foster Morrow, I also expect to take a big step. He's in a, back in his hometown. He's in his home state, back in Louisiana, where he won a state football championship, where he played at LSU. These are things that I think Foster Morrow will just have all this thing, all this stuff channeled. And plus, he just beat cancer. He's like, I'm going to go out here and ball out if I have to. I mean, come on. I mean, uh, you guys know what I'm saying here. You're picking up what I'm putting down. But I also want to ask you this question. I want you to rate the tight end room of the New Orleans Saints. Scale it 1 to 100. If it's a 1, it's the worst one in the league, and it's terrible, and they you know, might as well never throw the ball to the tight end. If it's a 100, I mean, you got, like, Travis Kelsey and, you know, a, I mean, just a ton of great plays. I mean, it's a great tight end room, but y'all know what I'm saying. So, guys, scale it for me, 1 to 100. And also, while you're down there, 
do me a favor and subscribe today. We have Saints news, rumors, updates, watch parties, live shows. Our shorts page is always popping. Our community tab is always has some interesting content. But we also provide informative and entertaining content by Saints fans for Saints fans. So be sure to hit that sub button, lock us in, and turn on your notice. And I want to just show this real quick. So this photo was tweeted out recently, and I thought it was pretty interesting. I was like, first of all, Derek Carr and Mean Muggins, pretty funny. Gotta love it. it, it you know, that Cajun food's just kicking in for him. But y'all know Chad Ochocinco? Y'all ever heard of this guy? I think he's put in a pretty good prediction here. 38 touchdowns, 6 interceptions, 4,700 yards. I don't know if it would be that big. I don't know if that's what I would predict. But Chad Ochocinco knows ball, so I'm going to just sit here and appreciate that. If I had to put my prediction in, I'm saying 30 touchdowns, 10 interceptions, you know, upwards of 4,500 yards, something like that. I think that's not a terrible prediction or something to accept, or assume for Derek Carr this year. But as we know, Chad Ochocinco avid ball knower. He knows ball. He understands it. And I'm going to trust Chad Ochocinco and, and why he said this on Derek Carr because, you know, he's a good football player. And honestly, it's just a lot of fun to talk about. But I wanted to share that tweet because I thought it was really interesting. And guys, I also want to share this deal. You can get two t-shirts for 40% off if you use this code chatsports.com slash Saints Combo. Again, you don't get one or the other. You get both of them for 40% off. So this is a great deal. I'm going to pick one of these up. Give my I'm going to rock the gold one. I'm going to give my dad the black one, and I hope that you do the same thing. If you have a Saints fan in your life or you just want two T-shirts, rack it up. Go use this code to, or use this link. It's in the comment section and in the description. It's chatsports.com slash Saints Combo. All right, so the back half and the last part of the show, I just want to want to talk about why I believe Derek Carr is going to succeed this season with the New Orleans Saints. And I've talked about it before, but I just kind of want to reiterate and go back on it and just explain my thoughts a little bit more in depth. But – he knows how to win down the stretch. He has 33 game-winning drives in his career. The guy knows how to put a two-minute drill together. And again, I understand there's no playoff success. There hasn't been any at all. He's only made the playoffs a handful of times, if not even that. And what I will say, though, is he knows how to win games. And when you have a quality defense, I don't think he's going to have to have as many game-winning drives. So I think that it's an interesting thing to note. I also find this pretty cool. He's very tough. He's only missed four games in his career. And at the end of the day, the best ability is availability. So if you can have a quarterback that is a pro, a pro bowl proven quarterback, I don't know if the pro bowl had like Tyler Huntley and stuff in it last year, but still he's been to the pro bowl multiple times. He's a guy who knows how to play football at a very high level. And he's also a great leader and he can rally the locker room around him. He can have the locker room buy into what his vision is for the team. And he's already been doing that at mini camp and at OTAs. He's been able to develop chemistry with guys like Derek, or not Derek Hart, Michael Thomas. He's already getting work in with him. Chris Olave, Rashid Shahid, all of these guys are getting reps in. And then you bring in some familiarity with Brian Edwards and Foster Morrow. Maybe Hunter Renfro trade happens. I don't know. Who knows at this point? But he's a great leader that can rally the locker room together. And another reason why Derek Carr is going to succeed you have a great defense, so you don't have a ton of pressure on you to be the guy every single game. The Raiders never had a top 15 defense. They've never had a top 15 defense when Derek Carr was there. The Saints, they are consistently a top 10 defense. I would argue they could even be a top 5 defense when everyone's healthy, when the thing's moving around really well. But they're in a weak division. The Falcons, the Bucks, the Panthers are all bad. The Saints... There's arguments to say that they might be bad too, but it's a weak division. It's pretty open, honestly. I really do think it's going to come down to the Saints or the Falcons. Never going to say the Falcons are going to win the division just out of principle, but you know what I'm saying. You got the point here. And another thing, you have plenty of pass catchers and plenty of weapons on the roster. Derek Carr has never had a ton of players to throw the ball to. Yeah, he had Darren, uh, Darren Waller. He had Devontae Adams, Hunter Renfro. Like, those are all great weapons. Don't get me wrong. But I think that this is a better list than just those three guys and Foster Mora. So I guess four. But this list is better, and you can't even fit all of them on the dang list. Michael Thomas, Chris Olave, Brian Edwards, A.T. Perry, Rashid, the need for speed, Shahid, Alvin Kamara after his suspension, Jamal Williams. We know what he can do. He's a dog. Kendra Miller. I expect big things out of the rookie from TCU. Juwan Johnson, Mr. Reliable, and then you just have the Swiss Army Knife, the do-it-all guy, the actual flexed football player, Taysom Hill, 
as well as Foster Morrow and a plethora of other weapons. My take on all of this as a whole, there is no reason why the Saints can't win at least 10 games this season. You have the easiest schedule, the second easiest, if not the easiest schedule in the NFL. The best quarterback you're going to play is Thursday night football Trevor Lawrence. You're in a weak division. You have a very talented roster, both on the offense and on the defense. The question's going to come down to coaching. I will sit here and acknowledge that. If the coaching can't ever figure it out, nothing's going to work because that's what it all boils down to. But I think that this team has no reason to not win 10 games. I, I, if you can sit here and say that they can't win 10 games, I'm sorry. I just want you to go and watch some tape. Look at the guys they have on the roster. Look at their schedule. You re Read into it. You know what I'm saying? I mean, this team has a very high ceiling. I think that the floor could also be pretty low, but I truly do believe the ceiling is very, very high. So let's go, Saints fans. If you believe in the New Orleans Saints, get in the comment section, type who that, and as always, y'all stay golden. We'll catch you next time. Don't forget to subscribe, hit the thumbs up icon, and turn on your notifications.